an absolute bombshell of an allegation dropped Wednesday afternoon involving Shohei Otani and his interpreter, Ipe Mizuhara. Now, Mizuhara has been fired from the Dodgers after being accused of, quote, massive theft. Five ball, onto the track, at the wall, it's gone! Home run! Turns on a ball, deep right field, and gone! What a game, what a moment. What is up, my friends? Welcome into Flippin' Bats. Man, oh man, what a show we got coming for you today. Honestly, strap in, folks. All hell has broken loose in the baseball world. Some big time allegations coming out um, involving Shohei Otani and, and his team, and we're going to talk all about that. Uh, obviously, going to talk about the Seoul series as well. That just wrapped up two games over there in South Korea. And power rankings are back. Week zero power rankings. We're going to talk that, some fan questions. Uh, this is a, this is going to be a juicy show. And Alex, as I mentioned, all hell has broken loose like, in the baseball world. What a wild start to the baseball season, right? I mean, last week we were sitting here in shock talking about how Shohei Otani got married. No one even knew he had a girlfriend, let alone a <laughs> wife. That and we thought news. that was <laughs> yeah. the biggest yeah. news. But boy, were we wrong because yesterday we got shocking gambling news surrounding Shohei Otani and his interpreter, Ipe. Yeah, so bear with me here. A lot of, lot of information going to get thrown at you, but an absolute bombshell of an allegation dropped Wednesday afternoon involving Shohei Otani and his interpreter, Ipe Mizuhara. Now, Mizuhara has been fired from the Dodgers after being accused of, quote, massive theft by attorneys representing Otani. So, per ESPN, federal investigators were looking into a massive bookmaking operation. And when going through documentation, they noticed Shohei Otani's name on multiple wire transfers. So after hearing this story was going to be made public, Shohei's camp arranged for Ipe to meet with ESPN reporters for a 90-minute interview. So in that interview, Ipe said Otani was the one that logged into his computer to wire the money over under the memo, quote, loan. The reporter personally saw that there were two $500,000 wires. Ipe noted in that same interview that there were about eight to nine of those wires. So the report does state that his overall debt totaled about four and a half million that Ipe had to ask Shohei to help him pay off. Ipe stated, and I quote, that he got in over his head. So from there, he had to ask his friend for help. On Tuesday, Ipe said, quote, I want everyone to know Shohei had zero involvement in betting. I want people to know I did not know this was illegal. I learned my lesson the hard way. I will never do sports betting again, end quote. So when it became evident that this story was going to be made public, Ipe addressed the team after game one of the season in Seoul, in South Korea, after game one ended in a closed door meeting in the locker room, stood up and stated, I have a gambling addiction. Now, according to ESPN, players in that room kind of reacted with confusion. Okay, you have a gambling addiction. Just a bit of confusion there. Then a Dodgers official followed up saying he was using Otani's money to fund his own gambling debts. That is when, according to ESPN, Shohei found out about all of this. Now, bear with me here. Things continue to get more and more confusing. So, from there, the team went back to the hotel, and that's where the story changed. And Otani's team came out with their statement that there has been massive theft and that they have documents. So, reporters that Ipe had just talked to reached back out where Ipe then said that he lied about most everything, including Shohei's knowledge of the situation. And he also said, quote, obviously this is all my fault and I'm ready to face the consequences. Now, it's important to note here, Otani has not been accused of a crime. Shohei is the alleged victim 
of a crime in this situation. And we only know what we know. We have Shohei's camp saying it was eBay. We have eBay saying that it was eBay. And we're recording this at noon on Thursday. And there's surely much more to come about this entire situation. This is clearly just the tip of the iceberg of everything that's going to come out. And we will be here every single step of the way with complete transparency throughout all of this. Now, really, really important note. There was no betting on baseball. The betting was only on soccer, basketball, NFL, and college football. Again, no betting on baseball. This is not some sort of Pete Rose situation where he ended up banned for life. No betting on baseball was done no matter how you look at it. This story is sad. It sucks. Shohei and Ipe met in 2013. They have become best of friends. It, to be honest with you, just flat out sucks. Um, but it's also important to note that this is, again, just the tip of the iceberg. There is so much information that we don't know, that we are not yet privy to. So in my opinion, it would just be irresponsible to, to jump to any conclusions when it comes to all of this. Yeah, there is so much more information that is going to come out over the next couple of days, yep. couple of weeks, couple of months. What we do know is this is going to be a PR nightmare for Otani, the Dodgers, and Major League Baseball. Yeah. But my initial reaction, if Otani wasn't involved, whatever the story is going to be, I don't, I, I don't know if it's that big of a deal. It's sports gambling, right? Yeah. Sports gambling pays majority of the bills in sports right now. It is the biggest sponsor for franchises, for owners, for networks. It is everywhere, right? Yeah. And yes, it is legal in half of the United States. It is not legal where we are here in California. And if it was done illegally, then okay, not okay. But he also didn't bet on baseball. And the thing is, baseball players are allowed to bet on other sports, right? Yeah. Well, here's where it, technically sports betting in California is not legal. Yes. So, and he lives in the, it's obviously we live in California. So there's that. But you could do like a DraftKings, things like no, that. No, nothing. No, you cannot. Here's, here's why it's a big deal, Alex. Okay. Because it's Shohei. Yeah. He's the biggest superstar on the planet. He just signed a $700 million contract. There's no athlete in North American sports history that has ever gotten paid what Shohei just got paid. And after one game of his $700 million contract, this all comes out. That's why it's a big deal. We don't know anything. Yeah. If you're jumping to conclusions, stop it. It's irresponsible. We don't know anything other than what's out there. The reason that this is a big deal is because it is Shohei Otani, right? So it's just, I, I look, the internet's going to do what the internet's going to do. It's just yeah. frustrating because I do. I really do think it's irresponsible to jump to any sort of conclusions in, in this situation at all. I, I think the unfortunate part is we're already, what, we, this story hasn't even been out for 20, maybe 24 hours, and we're already getting so many different <laughs> situations. Yeah. We're getting so many different sides of the story. That's what's going to rub people the wrong way. And that's what's going to raise a lot of questions and things like that. And I mean, Otani had to go out and play another game immediately after yeah. this news came out. And I think on top of everything, the heartbreaking part, you mentioned it in your monologue, Ipe is more than just Otani's translator. Yeah. Ipe is Otani's best friend, like a brother. I spent so much time with the two of them when he came to the Angels in 2018. And these are both like great people with great hearts who just, whatever happened, once we get all the information, it all comes out. Like people make mistakes. Yeah. And obviously good people made mistakes yeah. here. Alex, in whichever I, way it's gonna come out. As as you have, I I've met Shohei. He's a great person. I've met Ipe. 
He's a good person. Yeah. And by all accounts and everybody I've talked to around the league and, and players around the league, everyone's loved Epac. So my hope here, again, with what we know, is that Ipe is able to, to get the help that he needs in, in this yeah. situation. He clearly has a, a gambling addiction, which, which is no joke. And, and I no. hope he's able to, to get the help that he needs and, and put this in the past and put this behind him. And it's just, um, it's just, as I said, a situation that it just, it just sucks. And there's no other way to <laughs> no. put it. To come out after the first game of the season, uh. For the Dodgers, how does this and will it affect Otani and the Dodgers moving forward this season? I mean, it has to because there is going to be more. This is going to be a question that's asked to him probably every single day. Well, it already is affected, you know, like it already is. They had they had to play another game. Yeah. And I guarantee you, everybody in that locker room is getting asked about it. That's it. Whether it be by reporters there at their locker room, friends or texting them. Friends texting yeah. them, family, people that they haven't talked to in years, like, hey man, how's it going? It's like when somebody wins the lottery and then all of a sudden all your friends come out of the quote friends hey. come out of the woodwork. Yeah, it's this is a similar sort of thing. It's like, hey, haven't talked to you in so long. Hope you're okay. What's the deal with Shohei and what happened uh -huh. in the locker room? So they're they're gonna deal with this for a long time until all of everything comes out and this will play out as it may. And they're going to be dealing with that until then. And Shohei specifically. And and he went out in, in game two and honestly had a had a really good game and had some really good at-bats. But it's, it's more of a long-term question of, you're the Dodgers. You just had the most talked-about offseason. You just mm -hmm. spent over a billion dollars on, on two players. And you're the favorite to win your division. You're a favorite to win the World Series. And now all of a sudden, two games in, you haven't even played a game in the United States yet. And your yeah. team is going to be under a spotlight probably for the entire season. And if if we figure this all out before, there's still going to be comments for who knows how long. Yeah. And it's not going to be easy, Alex. It's no. not. It's not going to be easy to silence this and turn the page. Everyone's going to be dealing with it, specifically Shohei. Um, it's it's going to be a tough – this is – if you're a Dodgers fan – this isn't this is a nightmare of a start to the season because now you can't just focus on baseball. Now there's a lot more outside focus instead of just thinking, damn, we got three MVPs at the top of our lineup. That ain't the, that's not the conversation anymore. It's what is going on with these gambling allegations and, and this massive theft that's being alleged and what is going on there. And that's that's the sad that's one of the sad parts of all of this. I think another sad part, even just in the last 24 hours, as you said, when you have a connection to someone where something happens, people come out of the woodworks and people are yeah. sharing their opinions. And Otani was on a pedestal. He was the, the gif, the, the god of baseball, the, the two-way player, the unicorn. And this is kind of the first bit of adversity that we have seen, the public has seen, that he has been through. And it's a big one. Yeah. Uh, like I said off the top, it's a PR nightmare for Shohei Otani, the Dodgers, and Major League Baseball because he is the face of baseball. He's the face of Japan. He's the face of the Dodgers. Like He is an incredible human and player that this is this is messy, and it's only going to get messier. Yeah, and that's that, to your question, is why this is such a big deal. Yes. Because it's it's Shohei. And if it, I don't know if it weren't Shohei Otani with – this massive contract he just signed and all everything happening while it's middle, you know, they're playing in the middle of the night in, in South Korea. And, you know, like, I don't know if it's, if you're going to turn on the TV in the morning and the first news story isn't going to be about March Madness starting. It's, it's about no, Shohei Otani <laughs> and this whole thing. It's not, I don't think it's happening if no. it's not show. No, this was the A block on every major sports yeah. talk show today. If you turned on any TV, any sports talk radio, this is what everybody's talking yep. about. And again, we don't know, we don't have the full story. And until we have the full story, it's just, what a shit show. And where this <laughs> is a massive deal is if there was gambling on baseball. Yes. And there was yes. not. There was yes. not gambling on baseball and and that's where this that that's a, I I really do I can't yeah. hammer that home enough. That's where there's that's, that's the where line. this is the that's the, the, the line. Yes. that's if it was then it's this is a I would have a completely different feeling about yeah. this. But you know what? 
let's get back to baseball. <laughs> let's, let's all take a communal, uh. like, big breath here because oh, that's been our last 24 hours, and it has been wild. But what a start to the baseball season. Yeah. Uh, waking up at 3 a.m., we... <laughs> You guys, <laughs> we weren't perfect, but we did our best. And isn't that what life is all about? Because on Tuesday, I don't know, it all blends. It, whatever day Who it knows? was, Ben goes, you gonna wake up? Of course I'm gonna wake up. We're gonna set alarms. We got 3 a.m. alarms. Um, yeah. How'd that go? Uh, <laughs> apparently, in my sleep, I snoozed it three times until my husband kind of gave me a nudge punch, like, bro, you gonna get up? I was like, <gasps> What did I do? He's like, you've been snoozing for three cycles. Ooh, I yeah. have a story for you, Alex. What'd you do? Did you snooze too? We sat here on whatever day our episode came out, Tuesday. Tuesday. And I said- You gave me crap. I said, Alex, you gonna wake up? <laughs> yeah. You gonna, are you though? Are you gonna wake up? Uh huh. Because I remember World Baseball Classic and some of those alarms crept a little bit later. Well, I said, <laughs> yeah. day, game one, I set an alarm for 2.55. Yeah. I woke up at 325. There was no alarm. Oh. I don't I don't know if it just didn't go oh, so off. So you did the same thing as I did. You snoozed it in your sleep, but you turned it off instead of yeah, snoozing I must, it. I must have. Yeah. I don't know what happened. Yeah, you were in a good dream. <laughs> but my first thought was, oh shit, I gave Alex <laughs> so much shit about not waking up. And I've been prepared for this for weeks. I couldn't wait. And then I didn't uh, wake up until I woke up, and I think in the the top of the second. But same. yeah, just and, in just in time to see Otani's first hit in stolen base. Yeah, I did. I did see yeah. that. But then <laughs> this is fun. so game two. I woke up in plenty of time. Plenty of time. Uh, I was in like five minutes. Woke up in time. Yep. Everything was on schedule. Everything looked great. And this was funny. And tell me if I'm wrong here. Okay. But I'm, I'm scrolling through Twitter <laughs> all game. Tweets are flying. It's like six something. And all of a sudden I look down and I see the first tweet all morning from Alex that to me screamed, I just woke up. Here's a brief synopsis of the game. So much offense. Oh my God. And I texted and I responded, good morning, Alex. Is that true? So, so par partially true. Uh, I did get up at 3 a.m., sat my booty on the couch and immediately fell back asleep on the couch and then, and then woke up again at what? 6 15. Um, uh. Yeah, Alex, so two things can be true. Yes and no. This uh, the series was awesome. I really did enjoy it. It was so good. The vibes were immaculate. Dude, they opened the games with like K-pop performances. Yeah. They had full blown like performance dancers, like on top of, as you see behind us, if you're watching right now, they have like the cheer squads on the dugouts. But yeah. before that, it was like, Halftime performances like Lasers, you have that. It was wild. Yeah, like you have like the Super Bowl. Like it was so cool. Yeah. It was so cool. But also, when they were showing stadium shots, you guys, they serve fresh lobster, lobster tails. This is, all, at this this is Alex's main. It main was. Takeaway. I was like, it was going to a commercial break. I was like, no, 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 no. Really? Fresh lobster tails? It's like at the three, stadium. It's like 345 <laughs> Tuesday Wednesday morning, and I get a text from Alex. Lobster. <laughs> Look at the lobster. Ew. It looked insane. Uh, I mean, on top of you have good food and vibes are great. Yeah. Sold. It was, it really Sold. was great. And I think it's good for the game. And I and I wanna I wanna point out a, a narrative that I was seeing. I these games aren't tailored towards America. Yeah. Right? It's tailored to grow the game on the other side of the world. I quite like it was cool being able to wake up and, and see those games. But the the narrative of like really you're starting the game in, in South Korea where it's a 3 a.m. start time and, and Shohei's debut. Well, a couple things can be true. One, these games were about growing the game globally. Mm -hmm. Two, when these games were scheduled, Shohei Otani was not a Los Angeles Dodger. It's no. not like Major League Baseball was like, we want Shohei's debut to be in South Korea and we're going to do it at 6 a.m. Eastern, 3 a.m. Pacific. This was this was confirmed so long ago. And then Shohei signs, and this is just, just so happened to be where his debut happened and all hell broke loose as well. But, Did you also see Ken Griffey Jr. was out yeah, there was cool. in the camera well again? Our like, friend. 
Le- our friend. Our friend. Thank you. Our friend, Ken Griffey Jr. And like the full fist bump after Betts hit his yeah, home run cool. with both of them in the camera wall. I mean, it was just, it was so cool. Yeah. So it more, was so cool. More of this. There it is. More of this. There it is. Do it. South Korea was awesome to see. They've done it before in, in Australia. They're doing it in Japan next year. So cool. M- more of this. It's awesome. Yeah. It's great for the growth of the game. And guess what? The Dodgers are going to come back. And on the 28th of March, one week from Thursday, they're going to, again, have an opening day that everybody can go to and see Shohei's I'm debut going. at the Dodgers in the U.S. I just got invited yesterday. You're going Thursday? Uh, yeah, opening I'm going day. Friday. Look at us. Okay, cool. We're covering- Look at us. <laughs> Look at us. <laughs> nice. I love that. Yeah. Okay, well, let's let's do some, some t- major takeaways from the Soul Series, mm-hmm. okay? Starting with number three, because there were some- some big growing pains for Yamamoto. Yes. Yes. Number three for me, or number one, however you want to look yeah. at it. We can go in reverse order. Number three is that nerves got the best of yeah. Yoshinobu Yamamoto. And in his MLB debut, $300 million man, most, you know, expensive free agent in the his free agent pitcher in the history of baseball, comes out amid with with a lot of with a lot of speculation about how he's going to do after not a great spring training and just a lot of eyes on him because of coming over from MPB and a a big transition. And it didn't go well. Got through one inning. He threw one inning, gave up five earned runs, walked one, struck out two, and is now after one start sitting with an ERA of 45, which is never what you want to lay your your head down on pillow at night thinking, dang, I got a 45 ERA. That's not great. And it's not great. But it was so clear to me that, and I think everyone listening and watching right now can relate to, of course he's nervous. Of course he's amped up. Of course he's missing spots by a little bit. And that's what we saw. It's not that the stuff isn't good. It's that the the normal, precise Yoshinobu Yamamoto was just a little bit off and missing pitches and getting in trouble with missing those pitches. I mean, you look back to his MPB career, in 118 career NPB starts, he only failed to complete five innings twice. Two times. And in his first Major League Baseball start, it happens. And last year for him, in 171 innings pitched, he only gave up 22 earned runs. He's now given up five earned runs in one inning here in Major League Baseball. So if you are out there overreacting <laughs> to this Yamamoto start, I have some words for you. And those words are shut the hell up. The guy's going to be fine. His stuff is nasty. We're not going to overreact to one start when it's his first start in Major League Baseball amidst all of the transitioning from a new league, amidst all of the nerves of trying to live up to that contract, this is one start. The guy's going to be a stud. Move on. We move on. He'll start again here in just about a week. And even if that doesn't go well, this is a long contract. And he's going to be just fine. We're not overreacting to this start. And that's what. Listen to what Dontro Willis had to say here. He said, teams are going to be very aggressive because he's around the plate with everything. So he's going to have to change eye level of the hitters and move their feet to make them uncomfortable. First inning is difficult because you have to get settled with your feel and command. And he just wasn't able to do that. No. And I want to remind people, Shohei Otani's first year in Major League Baseball was a struggle on the mound during spring training and right out of the gates. This is normal. This was to be expected. Now, if he had like a lights out game, that would have been shocking. This performance, not that shocking to me, Yeah, honestly. Yeah. That's bottom line. I, I knew there was going to be growing pains. I knew there was going to be a bit of a struggle because I saw it firsthand with Shohei Otani yeah. when he came over to Major League Baseball. Yeah. So this is very, this is normal. This is on brand for switching leagues, countries, feel, every like everything is different. Yeah. Again, everything. Th- there's no way around it. One inning yes. and five earned runs is a bad start. It's a bad it's start. It's really bad. And really bad Would start. you expect growing pains throughout the season? Yes, and I said as much. Would you expect them to come this bad in game one of his career in Major League Baseball? No, but again, growing pains are going to happen. He's going to be fine. This is what he said after. Yeah. He said, I wasn't able to execute pitches from the stretch. 
I know how to fix it, and I'm going to talk to my pitching coaches, which are Mark Pryor and Connor McGinnis, mm -hmm. and then get myself ready for the next one. Yeah. Great. You know what happened. You know how to fix it. Move on. You were amped up. He wasn't able to channel in that adrenaline. As Adrenaline's a tough, tough uh -huh. thing. You can either really use it to help you, or it can really hurt you on a baseball field, and it hurt him in game one. He really struggled. He got out of that first inning and uh, didn't come back out, and I am excited to watch his next start. Yeah, I mean, he also faced an insane top of the lineup right out of the gate, which leads us to the second takeaway. Padres are pretty good. Alex. Padres are pretty good. Here's, here's my second takeaway. Padres might be a playoff team. Yep. They're, they're good. Yeah. I mean, you, you, I was watching this lineup. I really believe last year – their studs were were dealing with something. Mm -hmm. You know, Xander Bogarts had the wrist and never really looked healthy all year. Manny Machado obviously injured and just never felt Fernando like Juan Tatis Soto not was coming it, out right Tatis out of the gates. Didn't, yeah, didn't yeah. start the team, didn't start the year with the team due to his suspension. So just the vibes were weird. Really then weird. guys get injured and, yeah. and dealing with nagging injuries and just never felt themselves. I watch this Padres lineup right now. I watch Xander Bogarts look like Xander Bogarts. Mm -hmm. the, I, I would I, the guy's going to hit 300 this year. I watched Fernando Tatis Jr. hit a ball 117 miles an hour. Ooh. I watched Manny Machado hit a ball off the back facing of the stadium for a massive homer. I watched Jackson Merrill hitting in the in the at the bottom of this lineup. Dude, he crushed. So you have depth, you have superstars that mm -hmm. appear healthy, you have a rotation. You Darvish looked Good. Obviously didn't get, I think he threw three and two thirds, but yeah. silenced a, a Dodgers lineup and, and his stuff looked good. You have an, a rotation that just added Dylan Cease, Ooh. who is going to be really, really fun to watch on this team. You have a completely revamped bullpen. Yes, no Josh Hader in the back end, but some arms that really impressed. Some not household names in the bullpen that looked really good. And it's just a revamped bullpen that has some talent my takeaway from watching this series, I, I know we're two games in, but this Padres team might just be a playoff team this year. They are really good and really fun to watch. I hope so, because we had high hopes for them last season. They were, yeah. along with the Mets, I think the biggest disappointment in baseball last year. When you have that much star power, and they still have that much star power, and added even more star power, hopefully, again, it, it, it all comes down to the, the vibes in the dugout, the clubhouse, yeah. on the field, and it felt like they were having fun, and it felt like they were connected yeah. just in these two games that we saw. Yeah, and and again, they they did lose Juan Soto, and yeah. I'm not discredit. Like, obviously, that's a massive loss. Um, but I just watched this team, and like, if you were to tell me before last year, let's take Juan Soto out of that lineup. Wait, the Padres lineup right now has Tatis, Xander Bogarts, uh -huh. and Manny Machado. Yep, that's. Really good. Fire. And now you add in a, a top prospect in the game of baseball in Merrill who's playing center field. And I was super impressed both games. He didn't get a hit in game one, but put together some really, really good at bats. And then in game two, uh, just kind of broke out onto the scene and looked mm -hmm. really, really good. Um, so yeah, impressed, impressive stuff. Superstars everywhere you look. Yep. They have the makings of a playoff team. They do. All right. And the top takeaway... Man, we've been talking about all day here. Shohei Otani's still really good at baseball. Dude rakes. Yeah. Confirm. Shohei still rakes. Game one goes two for five, steals a bag, drives in a run. Game two for me is honestly where it was even, even more impressive. Yeah. There was not a single exit velocity. And this, I will remind everybody in case you didn't hear me at the beginning, game two, a lot of eyes on Shohei. All of the eyes, on, eyes on Shohei. All Dude of the comes eyes. out, didn't hit a single ball with an exit velocity below 98.5. In fact, three were over 100. He hit three fly balls. This is crazy. He hit three fly balls that totaled 1,114 feet, and they were all outs. Ooh. He was five feet away from having a couple home runs. Uh, super impressed with him. Super impressed with his approach, with his ability to to get in the box, especially in game two, and and do what he did. I know the results weren't necessarily there, but again, you can't really 
you, you can't control the results. Put the ball hard, hit the ball hard, put it in play. He did that. Um, yeah, Shohei still rakes. It was really fun to watch him. I, I, I think the dude could go 40-40 this year. I, I tweeted that. Stole a, stole a bag in game one. Uh-huh. Like immediately. Like got to first base and then immediately stole yeah. a bag. Yeah, I, like all I really a do think first because, hit, he's, first bag. because he's not going to pitch this year. I he's think he's going to steal in. more bags. 40-40 season yeah. for Shohei. Yeah, no, this was fun. And I love, you know, I love an offensive explosion game. And that's what game two was. We had 26 runs, 33 hits. Like it was, it was insane. It was like, everyone got a hit. You get a hit. You get a hit. You get a hit. So I had a great time. Yeah. Once I rewoke up. Once you, once, yeah. Once I rewoke up. And sent out up. the tweet. So <laughs> much offense. I'm awake. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get to week zero power rankings. Because yeah, baseball baby. has officially started for two teams. But it will really kick off a week from today. So we're going to start with the power rankings. It's that time of year, Alex. It is that time I of year. I start coming out with power rankings. They get absolutely ripped to shreds Let's by go. people. This this is I'm baseball. looking at this. I might have some. Mm, Baseball's chill. so back. So <laughs> back. Power rankings are back, baby. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. All right. Let's start at number 10, the Young Guns, the Reds. The Young Guns, the Reds. This was tricky for me and almost I... Spoiler alert, the Padres okay. aren't in here. But after after watching them these couple of games, they're right there. The The Padres are a fun team. But I did go with the Reds at 10. To anybody that's been listening and, and watching the show for, you know, the last few months, you know I am high on the Reds this year. Very high. And I am very disappointed in the uh, injuries that have just, like, it's just one injury after another with these guys. Yeah. It's honestly, it's honestly insane what has been happening to the Reds in spring training. Matt McClain. TJ Friedel, everywhere you look, you got guys getting injured. But again, I'm excited about this team. That's why they're here at number 10. And it's really funny looking at the power rankings on the on the screen and seeing Cincinnati Reds, their record zero, zero and zero. zero. Uh, they're at number 10. Yes. Okay. Number nine, Julio's team, the Mariners. I am also high on the Mariners this year. Okay. I I do uh-huh. think they will really compete in the AL West. Okay. I think they have a chance to to win that division. I know everyone's talking Astros, Rangers, as they should be. Mm -hmm. But I I wouldn't be shocked if the Mariners win the division. Why? They're pitching. Their pitching is so, so good. And they really do have some additions. Uh, I think Canzone is going to be good in that offense. I think Julio is going to take another step forward and be finish, I don't know, top three in the MVP voting this year. Um, So you, you pair a rotation full of stars and studs with a guy that I think could be an MVP on the team and some good pieces around him. Yeah. I think the Mariners are going to su- surprise some people. I have them at number nine. Okay. At number eight, they were in the world series, the D backs reigning NL champions coming in, starting the year at number eight. Uh, I do. I still like this diamondbacks team. Uh, really good additions, mm-hmm. really good, uh, really good rotation. I think, I, I like the addition of Eugenio Suarez over at third. Uh, I, I really do like what they've done. So improvement for the D-backs. Um, do I think they win the NL West? Man, that division's going to be really good. I don't. But I do think they're still a really good team, and I think they can get back into the playoffs. I have them at eight. All right, number seven, they picked up another superstar in Juan Soto, the Yankees. Yeah, I, I think the Yankees I would have a bit higher if it weren't for the Garrett Cole mm. news. Uh, 10 to 12 weeks until he can return to the rotation. Let's err on the side of 12. Let's let's call 12 weeks, three months. Let's call a spade a spade here. 12 yeah. weeks sounds a lot better than three months, but that's what we're talking. Ooh. Then you're looking pretty much the first half of the season without your superstar ace. I don't like that. And then there becomes a lot more question marks in that rotation. Now they desperately need Carlos Rodon to be what, what we saw, the, not last year, the year prior with the Giants. Um, which he has looked really good in spring training, I might add. But they need to go. They need to go get Jordan Montgomery. I think this ro- this rotation has question marks. Mm-hmm. That's why they're here at seven. I love Soto. I love Judge. There's no. That's a. There's no better dynamic duo back to back in a lineup. Uh, I don't know if I agree with what I just said, but it is up there. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> uh, Soto and Judge is unbelievable. Okay. I'm excited to watch them. The lineup's going to be good. Really fun. I have them at number seven. Okay, number six, also dealing with some pitching injuries, the Astros. Again, that's why they are down here at number six. Um, Their rotation right now is kind of in shambles. Justin's not going to start the year uh, 
on the active roster. He's going to start the year on the IL. But again, it, I, it, it shouldn't be long. It should not be long until Justin's back in the rotation. I'm hoping, I, I still think April he can be back in that starting rotation. But Urquidy news. Um, mm. Not landing Snell after Urquidy when it was when it was talked about. McCullers out for a while. Garcia out for a while. It's just the rotation's kind of in shambles. Um, lineup's still going to be unbelievable. That's why I'm starting them here at six of how good that offense is going to be. Bullpen's going to be unbelievable as well. Uh, Presley and Josh Hader at the back end. Yeah. Woo-wee. Yeah. Astros at six. All right. Heading into the top five, the reigning World Series champs, the Texas Rangers. Yeah. Uh, the Rangers, I, I have at five. And here's why. Uh, you lose Jordan Montgomery. Well, he hasn't signed anywhere. But as of, as of now, yep. he's not with the Rangers. I don't think he's going to end up there but he might. Um, yeah, I, you know, the, the Rangers are a team that got hot last year in the playoffs and, and really ran through the playoffs. It was unbelievable to watch. Do I currently, I, I currently think five is a, is a great spot for them. I, there are pitching question marks for me with this team. Now I do want to add, this is week zero power rankings. Yes. And I'm going to get ahead of it. We're going to do all of our division previews next week. And I, I do want it to be known that I, th- I think the Astros can win this division, the AL West. But why do, why do I have the Rangers ahead right now? Well, because of the Astros rotation kind of being in shambles. So again, this okay. is for week zero specifically, where the teams currently sit, where they, how they currently stack up. And I think right now, the Rangers are slightly ahead of, of where the Astros are just because of those rotation concerns. Okay, at number four, the reigning AL East winners, the Orioles. Yeah, AL East winners, number one seed in the American League. Man, this team's going to be fun. They still have, it is one week from the start of the season, and there are still some question marks of what they are going to do. There are some guys raking in spring training, one being Jackson Holiday. I really hope he makes the team. I really hope he makes the team, but I don't know what they're going to do. Colton Kowser down there, just absolutely raking in spring training. What do they do? I don't know, but they are going to be so good for a long, long time to come. And I do think, I think if it weren't for the Kyle Bradish injury, I would have the Orioles at three instead of four. But guess what? He did get injured and I yep. do have them at four. I, yep. The Orioles are going to be so much fun. I love this team. Uh, again, need to get out to the bird bath this year. Orioles yes, at four. Do. Okay. Now, the top three are the most dangerous teams, as of right now, in the National League, starting with the Phillies. Yeah, I I don't know where I don't know where most people have the Phillies ranked to start the year, but I don't really care. I think I might be higher on the Phillies than than most. I could see the Phil. I could see a world in which the Phillies win the NL East. I, I really could. There's so much talent. Zach Wheeler, Aaron Nola, Ranger Suarez, and then you have a, a lineup that you're going to get. I think they're going to get real Trey Turner this year, not Let's hope fake, so. not imposter Trey Turner well, from last well, year. Well, the World Baseball Classic got the real Trey Turner. That's right. Yeah, and the that's Phillies the, didn't. That's, that's the real Trey Turner. <laughs> the Phillies didn't until the <laughs> end of the season. I think they get him. Okay. Uh, Bryce Harper, you get a full healthy season, hopefully, of yeah. Bryce Harper. He's starting the year. He's going to be the first baseman of the future for the Phillies. You got Castellanos, who's going to rake. You have JT Real Muto behind the plate. You have Kyle Schwarber, who's going to hit like 180 with a million homers. Cool. And it's just cool, a, cool. a lineup a that has the capability of doing it all. They have superstars everywhere you look. I'm really high on the Phillies. They're starting the year for me at number three. And I wouldn't doubt it if they end up moving a bit higher. Whoa. Which is going to be tough with the teams is, you have. It at is going to be tough. Two and one. So at number two, we just saw them play their season opener in Seoul, the Dodgers. Dodgers coming in at number two. I love the Dodgers. I love the Dodgers lineup. Wow. Can you say that again? I love the Dodgers wow. team. Wow. I love their roster. I love the Dodgers. Just say it again. <laughs> Do not clip that. Clip that. No clipping. Clip that. <laughs> No <laughs> um, I love their roster. I love their lineup. I love one through six in the lineup. There are some, con- there's a little bit of depth at the bottom that I would, that I, it, it is, it is what it is. I'm just trying to explain why I have them at two. And maybe I can do that more so when we get to one, 
I really like the way this Dodgers lineup is is constructed. There are to me some again rotation. This is the year where there's more rotation question marks than anything because Shohei's not pitching this year. What Bueller coming back from injury, Kershaw injury, Yamamoto not good in start one, not good in spring training. I I believe in in him obviously, but question mark there when when when's he going to figure it out in major league baseball i love the top of the rotation in tyler glass now i love bobby miller so i really i really am high on this team but the reason i'm explaining it like i am is because i want to explain why i have them at two and not number one where i have the atlanta braves let's go through this okay the atlanta braves one through nine in that lineup is the best lineup in baseball the Atlanta Braves have the best lineup in baseball, one through nine. If you want to sit here and say, who's the best one through three in baseball? Who's the best one through five in baseball? I'll give you the Dodgers. Yep. But that's not what we're talking. One through nine, the Atlanta Braves have the best lineup in baseball. And who has the better rotation? I will take the Atlanta Braves. It is close. But hear me out. Spencer Strider at the top could win a Cy Young Award this year. Favored to win the Cy Young Award this year. Max Freed at number two could win a Cy Young Award this year. Really good. Hopefully he stays healthy. The middle of that rotation, a guy like Charlie Morton, who has just become, in his older age, a staple of consistency. The guy's been really good. Chris Sale, question mark. Really, really good stuff. How long is he going to stay healthy? I don't know. That is a big big question mark for me. But I think the rotation for me with Strider and Freed at the top I think the Braves have the best rotation in baseball to start the season. I like Rysel Iglesias at the back end of the bullpen. I believe in the Braves' bullpen a little bit more than I believe in the Dodgers. I think, as we sit right now, the Braves are the best team in baseball and deserve to be at number one in the power rankings to start the year. So, before you get into that, Alex, a little quick recap. Okay. 10 through 1, I'm going to start the year, week zero power rankings, Reds, Mariners, D-backs, Yankees, Astros, Rangers, Orioles, Phillies, Dodgers, Braves. Go ahead. What do you got for me? I think the Dodgers should be number one. I'll argue week two. Let's 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 see the Braves play a game. That's fair. So okay. you don't there's I'll argue no week two. This is this is this is all speculation because no one's played yet. You haven't Dodgers seen have anything. Dodgers, Dodgers played. have played. Watch them give up 15 runs this morning. Mm-hmm. What do you mean they haven't? They're, they are one of yep. the teams that has played. <sighs> yep. I'll argue more uh, next next week once okay. we actually have seen some games. Can you, the next power So you games. agree? I'll, mm, no. No. I would put Dodgers at one because I'm going strong. I'm going strong on Dodgers this year. Well, of I do course. Every year. You, so, are you not Good. going strong on the Braves this year? Of course you are. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let me see him play. Let me see him play. Okay, yeah. let's get to some fan questions. And on a happy high note, we've gone all over the place in this episode. This has been an emotional mm. roller coaster, you mm, guys. Mm, mm. What an emotional roller coaster to the opening of major baseball, <laughs> opening of major league baseball season. Okay, let's get started. First one. When will Major League Baseball announce the two-team expansion we all know is coming, and who will the other team be besides the Nashville Stars? Good question. Good question from Westside Fireman. There you go. Fireman. 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 Either way, good question. Uh, I could see a world. So here's here's what we know about the situation. Okay. Manfred has stated publicly that the league will expand, and there will be expansion teams, and he's just waiting for the Rays and the A's to figure out their situation. And that has really come to light more so since he made those comments. Yeah. I still don't know if the A's situation is stable or figured out. It's not. I still think there's more to figure out there. Uh, And the Rays have talked about their their plans for the stadium renovation and and all of that stuff. I, I could see a world, if I had to answer, I could see a world in which next this, the off season after this season, yeah, we get an announcement about expanded teams. Yeah. And I think one will be Nashville. Yeah. Which I'm I am so pumped about that. And I've kind they of deserve been, a team. Yeah. And for for yeah. kind of a few years, I've been 
they they like have their organization set and uh-huh. ready to go. Yep. And I've I've got like friends that are part of that whole scenario now. And the Nashville, the, they send me jerseys. They send me like Nashville Stars jerseys. And Dave Dombrowski, uh, GM for the Phillies, yeah. was the the leader of the front That's office cool. for the Nashville Stars. But then he left to go to the Phillies. But they are ready. Yeah. Ready to go. So Nashville will be one. I think number two okay. is going to be in Salt Lake City. Ooh. I think they go to Utah. Here's why. Okay. One, there are plenty of other places that I think could get one, but those are like to me, to me, they're gonna go somewhere on the east and somewhere out west. I think they go west of the the Mississippi for for another team. I don't think they go, I don't think they do like Nashville and New Orleans. Or in Nashville and Charlotte. I just don't. I think they go Nashville, Salt Lake City. Uh, I could see like a Portland. Oh, something yeah. Like New that. Orleans doesn't have a baseball team. That's they have all? the Baby Cakes. Okay. Triple A team. Okay. New Orleans but that would also cakes. be a really fun place. It'd be great. A place that have great fans and a lot to do surrounding sporting events, It'd I think, great. is where it would succeed. I just, I'm thinking geographically here, and I think baseball is okay. in store for a big change in terms of adding new teams. And then I, I really do think they kind of tear down what we know of divisions and geographic location of things and really change it all up. So that's why I think they go one on the one on the east and, and one a little more out west and change up the leagues, divisions, and, and all. I, I think we're within five years of that happening. All right. That's fair. Next question. Uh, do you realistically believe the Tigers make the playoffs? Also, what is wrong with Javi? It hurts my soul. Mm-hmm. 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 Uh, do I realistically believe in the Tigers? Mm. Well, since the word realistically is like thrown in this there, year is my what heart in? believes in them. Okay. My heart believes in that rotation. My heart believes the offense can be good enough. My mind and being realistic does not believe the offense can be can be good enough this year. If I'm being completely honest, I I, I don't think they're there quite yet. I think they can be competitive in a division that's not the most competitive. Um, but I, yeah. I just, my gut doesn't say that they're a playoff team this year. I hope I'm wrong. I, I, I want the Tigers to be good. Um, point two, what's wrong with Javi? I, I don't know. I don't know. The guy's got one, the guy's got one hit in spring training. Last I looked, he was like one for 27 Yikes. with an OPS around 200 Yikes. and a batting average of 0. 0.054. Yikes. I don't know. I don't know. It it sucks. He's clearly a player that thrives off of adrenaline Mm -hmm. and big moments. Mm -hmm. And that's not an excuse. You signed a contract to play with the Detroit Tigers with a team that was trying to be on the up and up and, and change things around. So you don't have that nightly adrenaline. You don't have that nightly feel of a world baseball classic. You you just don't. So there is no excuse. You got to figure it out. It's so frustrating. The guy has a lot of talent, but he can't lay off back-to-back-to-back sliders that land in the other batter's box. There's no more excuses anymore for Javi, and I don't think there have been for, for a year. And I, I'm actually tired of hearing the excuse of, well, he, he arises in those big moments. He needs that big energy. Yeah, well, you're, you're paid millions and millions and millions of dollars to be a good, productive baseball player, and he's just not. And that's got to get fixed. It's got to get figured out. And if it doesn't, I, I, if you're the Tigers and you're serious about being competitive, you got to you gotta cut ties and, and miss out on all that, lose out on that money. You, you, you can't keep trotting them out there to shortstop, swinging it, balls in the other batter's box. You just can't. Somebody is frustrated. All right, let's wrap things up with our final fan question here. What do you think about the start times? Is it good for the sport in general? Being on the East Coast, this is one of the only times I'll get to see West Coast teams play, and there's nothing better than a baseball game before going into work. Okay, so he's talking about the the start times of the Soul Series. Ah, I was going to say, did I miss something? No. Okay. I, again, I, I enjoyed it. Uh, and I think it's important to note these games aren't tailored specifically to baseball fans in the United States. Yeah. These games are tailored to growing the game globally, which we will look back in years and think how important that is Mm -hmm. and how important it will continue to be at that point. But Major League Baseball has done a great job of, of realizing 
how to grow the game globally and sending teams to London and to the DR and to Australia and to Japan and the World Baseball Classic. All of that stuff has been great for the game. I loved this. Uh, it would have been a little bit easier on the East Coast. 3 a.m. is tough, tough on the West Coast. But, yeah, I mean, it's it's good for the game. So who, like, yeah, it's not tailored to us specifically. It's tailored to growing the game. I enjoyed it. I liked it. Yeah. The parts that I was awake for, I loved. Yes. <laughs> if I'm being honest. Yes. I did my best. Like we said, no one's perfect. All you can do is try. We did good. My alarm just didn't go off. Yeah. No, it yeah. did. You just... If you checked it before you went to bed, you, in your sleep, apparently gave it a little tap, tap. Nah, uh, not yet. <laughs> big, big week here, Alex. Big week. Today, yes. Thursday, Thursday morning, an episode came out with Money Mike Harris. The Woo! dude is a stud. Love Michael Harris. If you're a Braves fan or really just a, a fan of baseball, check this guy out. He's been hitting at the bottom of the Braves lineup and a big reason why I have You had him at number, number one. one. I was like, did he sway you? Did no. the conversation sway you? No. Uh huh. But uh, and he ain't gonna be hitting at the bottom of that lineup anymore. I think he's gonna have a big year. I could see Michael Harris being an All Star, and his uh, his expectations for himself and the Atlanta Braves are huge. Go listen to that. It just came out. Really good episode. Also yeah. coming out Monday, Brian Cranston, Walter White Ooh, from Breaking Bad coming on the sick. show. Um, Love man. that. That's going to be, I am really, really excited for that. My dad and I, uh, years and years ago, watched every episode of Breaking Bad together. Huge fan of his. He's a massive baseball fan, massive Dodgers fan. Um, I love that. So really cool to, to be able to have him on the show. So that's coming up next week. But uh, thank you all for listening. I, honestly, <laughs> a, a lot happening. Uh-huh. And, and complete, and there, there will be more. And we will bring that to you with complete transparency and honesty throughout this entire process. And uh, thank you all for listening. And thank you all for trusting this to be the place to, to get the news and to hear all about it. So make sure you're subscribed, following wherever you listen to your podcasts, Apple, Spotify. Um, you can also watch on Spotify. You can watch on YouTube as well. And follow us on TikTok. We're getting close to 100,000 followers. That is our goal. Just do it. Go over to TikTok. We do some really cool stuff there, and it's a lot of fun. So go check that out. But thank you all for listening. And remember, my friends, until next time, find your bat and flip it. Thank you.